My name is Kay Yan Yanahowski, and I'm the president of the Circular Church Congregation. It is my privilege to welcome you this morning to our online worship service. This week, our senior minister, Jeremy Rutledge, is on vacation with his family, and I'm happy to introduce our guest teacher, the Reverend Evelyn Oliveira. Evelyn serves on the church staff as our director of adult faith development. In our inclusive and progressive faith, we like to say that whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We're really happy that you're with us. Normally, if we were meeting in person, we would take a moment to pass the peace. During this time of online church, let's take a moment to post the peace instead. Post a friendly, peaceful message online or send a peaceful text message to someone you hold dear in your heart. And while you do that, we'll take a moment to have an announcement. Good morning, I'm Katherine Cullinan, and I'm the administrator at Circular Church. For the past couple of Sundays, some of us have been meeting for fellowship hour on Zoom at 11.15, and I'd like to invite you to join us today. To find out information about how you can connect, go open your church email or check the church app. There's a lot of information in there about things that are happening at the church and all the details and a link to the Zoom meeting are right there on the front page. Hope to see you at 11.15 today. Now that we've had a moment to post the piece and share an announcement, let us take a moment to prepare for worship. Let us take a deep breath and center ourselves wherever we may be to meditate, to pray, to do the good work of the church, to work for social justice and a more peaceful world. With these things in mind, friends, let us join in worship. We light this candle as a symbol of the mystery that is within us, among us, and at the same time beyond us. This mystery brings us together as one. No matter who we are, no matter where we are, we are one. Hi everyone, my name is Jared and it's just delightful to be bringing you the children's welcome today. So I want you to imagine with me that you looked outside and you saw this. Well, what would you do? Would you go and plan a picnic, start thinking about a walk outside? I'm guessing probably not, because you probably know what happens next. That's right, a big summer thunderstorm. And so, if you were like me, the thing that you would do was go and get inside once you saw those big looming clouds coming quickly. And that's exactly what I did. And that way I was able to watch, it was a pretty powerful, but also beautiful summer storm from the safety of the home that we're in at the moment. One of the ways you could describe what I did was seeking refuge. Seeking refuge means going into a place to seek safety from something that is maybe dangerous or troublesome outside. But running inside is not the only way to seek refuge. Just after that storm the next day, I woke up early and went out to the beach. That was also seeking refuge in a different way. For me, I find being outside in nature when I'm more or less by myself or with one or two other people that I love is deeply peaceful and comforting. You can also find refuge without going anywhere. For instance, in our house, sometimes we do some art. Sometimes we might read a book just alone or with the family. Another thing that we do when we're seeking refuge sometimes is what we do every Sunday. We can seek some refuge and comfort in each other, whether we're sending a message or having a phone call or able to see someone on a camera screen or a phone screen. That's a way of connecting with someone and sharing love 
maybe with family members that we don't get to see as often as we'd like to. In today's scripture reading, the psalmist talks about some of these types of things. The psalmist brings a message of comfort, of saying that God knows us really, really well and is always with us and loves us. And sometimes when the world is a troubling or confusing place, that message can also be another way of finding refuge. So why don't we close with a quick prayer? Dear God, help us to know you and to seek refuge in the wonder, the mystery, the creativity in each other and all around us. Amen. Hello, my name is Michael Griffin. This morning's call to worship is from the poetry of Rainer Maria Rilke. How surely gravity's law, strong as an ocean current, takes hold of the smallest thing and pulls it toward the heart of the world. Each thing, each stone, blossom, child, is held in place. Only we, in our arrogance, push out beyond what we each belong to for some empty freedom. If we surrendered to Earth's intelligence, we could rise up rooted like trees. Instead, we entangle ourselves in knots of our own making and struggle, lonely and confused. So like children, we begin again to learn from the things because they are in God's heart. They have never left it. This is what the things can teach us, to fall patiently, to trust our heaviness, even as a bird has to do that before he can fly. Please join me for a time of communal confession. O oh Spirit, we feel it in our gut, that sensation of dread and despair, the trepidation of checking the news each morning, of being shell-shocked by New York Times breaking news alerts, for fear of what new cruelty is being foisted upon the people. Our hearts are troubled by coronavirus decisions. Our heads ache from the stress of protecting our families and our communities. And our souls mourn for all the people who have suffered and are gone, whose names would take us days to speak aloud. God of the Oak Grove, Draw us into your bower. Conceive in us the spirit of new life. Feed us from the womb of the earth. Nurse us with the milk and honey of your wildness and teach us with your unconditional love. Lord, we struggle to still our swirling minds. Call us 
into the dwelling place of peace. We feel the heat of midsummer beating down on our withered souls. Help us to take refuge in the coolness and secrecy of the shade. We are unable to drown out the tantrums of narcissists and scoundrels. Speak to us instead in love through our neighbors and dear ones. We struggle to look away from the virtual onslaught of social media. Lead us instead to be addicted to watching the Spanish moss sway. We desperately miss our families, friends, and community members. But connect us with all life, the weeds and the herds, the seeds and the birds. God of the oak grove, draw us into your bower. Let us acknowledge our pains and concerns, but tell us it is okay to leave our worries out in the sun. Invite us to sit down under your gravity-defying canopy. Let us feel the twisted roots against our sore bodies. Pull shut our eyes and dapple our eyelids. Implant in us a precious dream of unity, of sacred love, of neighborly sacrifice, of physical, metaphysical interdependence. Grow in us an illogical resilience. The knowledge that amongst the chaos, there is order. That beneath the evil, there is life. And beyond the hate, there is love. Amen. I will reading today. This is from Psalms 
139, verses 1 through 18, from the Inclusive Bible. God, you've searched me and you know me. You know if I am standing or sitting. You read my thoughts from far away. Whether I walk or lie down, you are watching. You are intimate with all of my ways. A word is not even on my tongue, God, before you know what it is. You hem me in before and behind, shielding me with your hand. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, a height my mind cannot reach. Where could I run from your spirit? Where could I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in death, you're already there. I could fly away with wings made of dawn or make my home on the far side of the sea. But even there, your hand will guide me, your mighty hand holding me fast. If I say the darkness will hide me and night will be my only light, even darkness won't be dark to you. The night will shine like the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You created my inmost being and stitched me together in my mother's womb. For all these mysteries, I thank you for the wonder of myself, for the wonder of your works. My soul knows it well. My frame was not hidden from you while I was being made in that secret place knitted together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my body even there. All of my days were written in your book, all of them planned before even the first of them came to be. How precious your thoughts are to me, O oh God, how impossible to number them. I could no more count them than I could count the sand. But suppose I could, you would still be with me. May we hear the wisdom in the words. Thanks be to God. Hello, Circular Friends. It is nice to be with you once again. I am thankful for the opportunity to bring you today's teaching as it gives me a chance to reflect on all that is going on around us. My prayer is that my reflections will connect with you in some way. I hope that you and your loved ones find yourself safe as we each take refuge in our own homes and as some of us have to go in and out of that refuge for our community's greater good. Wherever you are today, thank you for letting me into your refuge virtually. You may have noticed that I keep using the word refuge. This is the fourth time I've used it in less than a minute. I've been thinking about the concept of taking refuge lately, and it seems that everything that I read keeps pointing back to that idea of taking refuge. This includes our Psalm for today, Psalm 139. I'd like to talk to you more about taking refuge, but first let's start with a story. And this is a story about a good dog. When Bill and I had been married about two years, we got a puppy. She was a boxer lab mix that we got at the shelter. She came from a litter of eight. And as we were playing with the puppies, trying to pick one out, this one crawled into Bill's jacket because it was so cold. She picked us, we were smitten. We got Samba at eight weeks old and she was our baby. She cried at night and woke us up like a baby. She was a tiny little thing, all black with one white paw, and she had us wrapped around that little paw. We traveled with her. We took her everywhere. You've seen young married couples who do this. Their dog becomes the center of their life, and she certainly was ours. One day when Simon was about two years old, I took her with me for a run in the West Ashley Greenway. We parked at the South Windermere Shopping Center by Earth Fair 
And when we came back from the run, I went into the coffee shop there to buy a drink. I tied Samba up to a table outside while I went in. And as I was in line, someone said, hey, is that your dog? I turned to see that something had startled Samba. And so she started pulling to get away. Well, as she pulled at her leash, she knocked over the table and it scared her so much that she started running. Only the table was still attached to the leash. And all I saw is Samba running with the bouncing metal table behind her. I ran after her, but she kept running. She became untangled from the table, but was still running everywhere, scared out of her wits. She was headed for that huge, busy intersection at the corner. There was no way that I could catch her. I was making a huge scene, crying and screaming for her and running. By some stroke of genius, as I passed my car, I stopped and I opened the back of the station wagon. When I yelled for my good girl to get inside, she turned around mid-intersection and made a beeline for the back of the car. We both collapsed with exhaustion in the safety of the back of my old Subaru. Our car had become our refuge. Today's teaching from Psalm 139 is easily one of my favorite passages from the Bible. It paints a picture of a refuge for me. It describes a loving presence that is all around us, sheltering us. When I was in seminary, I took a class on prayer and pastoral care. And for our assignments, we were encouraged to memorize 10 passages of scripture that we could have in our ministerial backpacks, if you will. And one of the ones that I chose was Psalm 139. At my wedding, Psalm 139 was read both in English and in Portuguese. Psalm 139 has been a sort of a refuge for me over the years. It has brought me a feeling of safety and given me comfort at different points in my life. As I thought about this Psalm, I was reminded of the Buddhist concept of taking refuge. In Buddhism, taking refuge is known as the triple gem or the three jewels. Practitioners vow to take refuge in three things, the Buddha, which is the role model of an awakened one, the Dharma, which is the body of teachings about the Buddha and from the Buddha, and the Sangha, which is a community of practice. Now in Christianity, we don't talk that much about taking refuge, but it is certainly something that we do. We, like the Buddhist, do take refuge in our communities of faith, in the teachings of Jesus, and in sacred texts that hold special meanings to us. We do this informally, but we can also choose to do it with intention. During this global pandemic, we certainly can use this practice of taking refuge as we are surrounded by so many unknowns and so many anxieties. Tara Brock, an American Buddhist teacher, speaks about what it means to take refuge. She says that much like praying to Christ or the Divine Mother, we can take refuge in a being or presence that cares about our suffering. Psalm 139 certainly paints a picture of a being who cares about our suffering. There is this sense of a loving presence that never leaves us regardless of our conditions. There's a sense of a presence that sees us as precious. Brock says that the practice of taking refuge can lead to a profound deepening of our faith. Because in taking refuge, we are practicing trusting the unfolding of our lives. We're reminded that there's something deeper that holds us up. We can meet it. We can find it. We can rest in it. We can rest in remembering our belovedness. We can let go into the unknown. I know that is a really challenging thing to do these days, trusting the unfolding of our lives. 
that seemed a lot simpler when we weren't in the middle of a pandemic. And yet wisdom teachers in all traditions remind us that it is the present moment that has something important to teach us. I read a quote from another spiritual teacher this week, Eckhart Tolle. Um, I read it on Instagram and I had re read it in one of his books before. I had to take a screenshot and I had to write it down in my journal because it spoke to me so profoundly. It said, life will give you whatever experience is most helpful for the evolution of your consciousness. And how do you know this is the experience you need? Because this is the experience you're having at the moment. Life will give you whatever experience is most helpful for the evolution of your consciousness. That seems so radical right now to say that this is the experience that I need, or even further that this is the experience that we all need for the evolution of our collective consciousness. And yet as we look around, we certainly see that things are coming to light and evolving at a faster pace than they were before. I've mentioned in a previous teaching that I was taking an online class on wisdom this spring. And my teacher, Cynthia Bourgeau, said something similar to what Eckhart Tolle said. Even though she said it many years ago, as did he, these pieces of wisdom still speak to us today. She said that all conditions that are honestly embraced and fully accepted can be the place of your healing and growth. All that is required is for you to honestly say yes and turn to them. Life is giving us this incredible challenge a scary one to say yes to. It is a lot easier to say yes, though, from within a safe refuge. Tara Brock teaches that in taking refuge, we are surrendering into the boundlessness of compassion. When we are feeling fear, we can surrender it to the beloved. This is not trying to get rid of fear, she says, but rather letting go into a refuge that's vast enough to hold our fears with love. From this place of refuge, we can say yes to, come, to what comes to us more fully. And when we surrender to the moment without our own expectations of how things might go, we open up space for growth and healing. We can take refuge in knowing that we're not alone. And as the Psalm says, we were already knit together with the necessary tools that we would need for each moment that we face, even this one. And in this moment, we are all intuitively rediscovering what it means to take refuge. We're taking refuge in our homes. We have learned to take refuge in things that we had gotten disconnected from. Stillness, nature, home-cooked meals, rituals, non-scheduled time, family, simplicity, spending time with our pets, writing letters. What are some of your examples? What are you rediscovering that brings you refuge? I read a New York Times article this week that highlighted the importance of these things we are rediscovering, these rituals. It talked about rituals and said that they help us to remember who we are and they help us to navigate life. Rituals connect our minds and bodies, reminding us in a primal way that we are safe. According to the article, rituals put the brakes on the parts of our brains responsible for emotions and calm us as well as focus us down. Rituals remind us of who we are they connect us and give us a sense of power over our situations. And this is so critical, especially during this time. Rituals can be a refuge. So as you bake another sourdough loaf or water your garden, or go to work in the midst of a pandemic, play another board game with your family, or even watch another church service on YouTube, or throw the ball to your good dog, 
or recite your favorite poem or song. Remember that these rituals are something you can take refuge in. They remind you of a greater presence that is with you and has always been with you. In closing, I wonder if you'd be willing to let me lead you through a short visualization exercise so that we can experience this, a bit of this refuge from Psalm 139. I feel that sometimes as we visualize, we can get out of our brains a little bit and experience things physically at a different level. So if you're comfortable, I invite you to either close your eyes or hold a soft gaze and sit comfortably. Let's take a deep breath to start. Imagine that you are being gazed at by a loving, accepting presence. The gaze from this presence feels tender and caring. This is the divine gaze. It sees you as you are. It sees your coming, your going, your thoughts. This presence sees you just as you are with a kind, warm, non-judgmental love. It knows the words that you've said and the words you've yet to say. It looks upon them lovingly and with compassion. Picture this divine gaze as a soft glow that is all around you, behind you, in front of you, above you, beneath you. It is a refuge of love surrounding you, both when you're at life's peaks and when you are in the depths. You are always within that glow. In fact, you've been in that loving glow since before you were you. You are, have always, and will always be an object of tender, divine affection. Sit with that sense of warm glow and of your own preciousness for a moment. And now I invite you to open your eyes. Wherever we are, we are not alone. We are in a refuge. We can take shelter during these strange days in rituals that remind us of who we are and in a presence that reminds us that we are beloved ones, nothing less. Amen. Now is the time in our service where we collect our offerings. Though we are not together in body, we are still one community in spirit, and we want to continue to support that community, both our church community and our wider, wider community during this time. The money that we collect goes to support the work of justice, both in our local community and in our wider world. You may want to shrink your YouTube screen to see ways to give down at the bottom. And I also wanted to remind you of our COVID-19 fund that we have set up. If you are in need of assistance, 
um, and would like to contact someone about that fund, please call our church office. And if you'd like to contribute to that fund, um, please designate that on your offering. Thank you for your support. We are in this together now and will continue to be together in the days ahead. Your gifts are important. Thank you for your gift of time, your talents, and for all the gifts that you give to our community. And our prayer is that in whatever way you give, that you would be reminded of Earth's abundance and of our connection. Amen. I went down to the valley to pray Do what you do for me, my Lord So God, happy is day all day Ain't you what you do for me It's all I need all day Do what you do for me, my Lord It's all I need That is blue angels, what you do for me, my Lord. Called on him to see me through. Angel, what you know for me? Well, it's all night, all day. Angel, what you do for me, my Lord? It's all night, all day. Angel, what you know for me? If you get there before I do. Till my friends that are coming to Ain't you what you know me Well, it's all night, all day Ain't you what you know me, my Lord It's all night, all day Ain't you what you know me Well, it's all night, all day Ain't you what you know me, my Lord Today's pastoral prayer comes from If Darwin Prayed by Bruce Sangwin, and it is a responsive prayer, and I have adapted it somewhat and asked that as a response that you would say with me, we take refuge. So when you hear me say, we take refuge, you say it as well. When the sun shines and when the rain falls, we take refuge. When the money gods smile upon us and when the bottom falls out of the market, we take refuge. When family is the wind beneath our wings and when it is a hurricane of hurt, we take refuge. When we are strong in body and mind and when illness reveals our vulnerability, we take refuge. When the beauty of creation drops us to our knees in awe, and when the injustice of humanity drops us to our knees in prayer, we take refuge. For we are in you, and you are in us, and there is a country of the soul where the eternal joy of being sustains us on this rocky road of becoming. We rejoice and give thanks we take refuge. 
Amen. As we go, may you keep holding on to that sense of your preciousness, of your belovedness. May you find refuge wherever you find yourself. God's peace be with you. Amen.